Why hello you people from Earth and Outer Space. It is I, Alexander from the Universe. In this episode of Let's Rust, we'll begin using cargo as well as talk about what it is. This episode is also available in the form of text over at universe.com. A link can be found in the description below. Let's talk about cargo. Cargo is a system for managing your Rust projects. It has the capability of building your code, downloading Rust libraries, also known as dependencies, that your project is dependent on, as well as building those libraries. And um, it really is a good thing. Like seriously, it's really good because it does everything automatically. And you kind of don't even need an IDE when you got Cargo, because Cargo is so powerful and professional and awesome. So let's let's make sure that that we have it. Cargo comes bundled up together with a Rust installation. So this means that you should have it on your computer. So go ahead, throw up your console if you haven't already. Uh, console referring to either your terminal on on Linux or Mac and your command prompt on Windows. Uh, and you're going to want to type in cargo, which is the, the command used to talk to cargo. And we're going to run it together with a flag. So we're going to do dash dash double dash version, just like we did on the Rust C command uh, in an earlier episode. Uh, going to want to press enter. And we should see cargo something something either Natalie or not Natalie. Uh, and uh, this means that we have cargo on our computers. Uh, so let's let's try and use cargo to actually generate something interesting. We're gonna generate a project, which we're gonna be working in. Uh, and we're gonna type in, and for that, we're gonna type in cargo, new, project name. Now, this is gonna be hello world that's what we're making make sure you're inside your rust folder like your rust dedicated folder so cargo new hello world there is one more part to it because if we were to press enter now it's going to generate us a library project that's by default so and we don't want to do that we want to have like an actual application where we can do stuff uh, so you're going to go dash dash add a flag to it and you're going to type in bin this makes it into a binary project, which is basically any applications project. You're gonna to wanna to press enter, and it should create ourselves a binary application uh, by the name of Hello World, or whatever you called it. If you wanna be a rebel, go for it. Hello World project. Let's type dir, let's see if it's here. I got our Hello World RS from previous episodes, but we also have a folder called Hello World uh, so we're gonna enter that folder. We're gonna do cd hello world. We're inside it. We can do dir, and all of a sudden you'll see lots of strange files here. We have a .git ignore. Uh, this is due to Cargo automatically setting up a Git repository. Well, it's setting up a folder that you can use as a Git repository without any problem whatsoever. Uh, we also got a cargo.toml file. Toml standing for Tom's obvious minimal language. It probably was like a guy at some point who thought, I really need to make myself a nice, obvious, minimal language that can handle cool stuff. And before we go any further as into the file structure of this, we're gonna open up our text editors and we're gonna do the control O for open or well press the open button somewhere. And you're gonna see this inside the Rust folder that we have a new nice folder here called Hello World. And double click that, you're gonna see the cargo.toml. Double click that. Now, what you see before your eyes is a beautifully laid out cargo.toml, well, a toml file. And up here's the package. That's the, that's our program uh, information information about our program or application. Uh, its name is Hello World. Its version is 0 0.1.0. This version is written in um, something called semantic versioning, which is 
it's a type of versioning which is really cool <laughs> so if you want to know more about it go ahead and tap it into your favorite search engine and uh, you're gonna have some semantic version to read up on uh, so currently our applications in 0 0.1.0 that's that's our version uh, then as for the authors here uh, all these as you can probably tell they're made up in like a list here so every new line is an entry there needs be a line break in between every entry in this file uh, name version and the authors now this has rot op taken directly from my computer environment uh, so we're going to go ahead and change this to something a little more interesting uh, we're going to go with my name or your name your full name like so and then there's also the option to specify an email address we're going to do a hit the enter key once then less than sign greater than sign and in between those we're going to tap in our emails well if you want to this is purely optional uh, and I want to type in alexander at universe.com I want to save this file uh, if you're more people working on the project multiple people uh, you can add multiple people by separating uh, those uh, separating entries into the author's uh, array structure by commas you can do another dude here like uh, John dude uh, John at example.com is gonna work perfectly fine got another author added to our project um, now I probably don't want this John dude here because he's weird <laughs> this is a dependency section we're gonna get you later so don't worry about that but that's basically where you put all your uh, different libraries you want to use and it's actually really simple using cargo because uh, cargo is gonna download everything for you as well like it's gonna compile everything it's gonna download compile and put it into your program no problem whatsoever it's really nice uh, so now for that, we're going to close the old file, because for some reason I got that open, and that's not the right file. So cargo.toml, uh, we're going to open up another file. Uh, we're going to enter the source folder of our project here. This is where the SRC, that's where all of our files regarding our project is put. Uh, and you can see that cargo generated a main.rs file for us, generated a Rust file for us. And double click that and in here you'll see fn main the whole wonderful function thing with like all the rest of the stuff now there is one thing here you see how the code block begins on the same line as the main this is perfectly valid and um, by Rust standards you actually want to write it like this now there are good reasons as to why you want to put it on a new line uh, link will be in the description below to a little post where people talk about that um, it seems as though it pierces though whenever you get over a certain threshold of understanding of programming you kind of switch from this style to this style uh, there are a lot of programmers who prefer it this way there are a lot of programmers who prefer it this way as well but I like it this way <laughs> And I'm willing to fight for that because this is really nice. This looks beautiful. Look at that. Like you can see it's connected with a function and everything and oh, it's beautiful. Uh, other than that, this is the same code from previous episodes. So we're going to save this and we are going to run it. Now there are several different commands that Cargo offers and you can read up more on them on the Cargo website. Uh, other than that, there's going to be two commands that we'll be using for this this whole series uh, actually probably just probably just going to use one uh, that's the cargo run command but before that let's talk about the cargo build cargo build inside your project folder you got to stand inside the project folder otherwise this ain't gonna work cargo build tap that hit enter and it's gonna be compiling your project let's see compile it it finished nothing happened really boring now we could launch this if we wanted to if we do dir and we do cd you see new target folder here uh whenever we build our project 
it creates a new target folder for us. So we're gonna type in target here, target. Uh, we're gonna do dir again. We'll see cd debug, we're gonna do dir again. And in here you can see a hello world.exe depending on what system you're on. If you're on Mac or Linux, it isn't gonna have this extension. It's just gonna be blank. Uh, so in order to do something with this, we, we could run it like we did before. So just hello world. And it's gonna say, hello world. But there is an easier way, because this is gonna get really impractical on some occasions, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> like we're gonna have to enter the debug folder every time we wanna run our programs. Uh, so there is an easier way. And that's type in cargo run. Now what this will do is both compile and run our project. Now it didn't compile it because the code was already compiled to its newest version. Uh, but if we go ahead in here and change this like hello, hello mama, and we decide to run this again, like cargo run, you see first compiles, finishes compiling, and then runs it. Hello mama, this is really nice, it's quick, it's I, I don't even have words for it. It's it, it's amazing, right? <laughs> Cargo is great. And now it says hello my minor consoles, which is oh well, it's just beautiful. <laughs> as soon as we get into the world of actually managing dependencies, you are gonna notice why cargo is amazing. Uh because it does all that for you. You don't need to compile anything yourself. It's like it's like magic. <laughs> like holy holy pinata, man. Why goodbye, you people from Earth and outer space. Feel free to leave a comment stating something utterly hilarious or perhaps even a lie. Until next time.